following on from my recent series of videos looking at the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series line, I thought I'd turn my attention and look at one of the spin-off deluxe releases from this line, which was Superman the Animated Series. Now this series launched as a spin-off from the highly successful Batman the Animated Series. In fact, it was produced by a lot of the same people and talent, most notably Bruce Timm of course, and really adopted the same style and aesthetic that Batman the Animated Series had such success with. The Superman Animated Series, however, was relatively short-lived. It had three full seasons and had a mixed critical reception. And whilst fans can argue between the two shows which is better, Batman the Animated Series definitely was the market leader. And Superman was not as warmly embraced, although it was still successful. So when DC Collectibles announced they were going to do a special deluxe set featuring Superman and Lois Lane, I was absolutely delighted. Being able to put these characters next to my Batman the Animated Series figures is an absolute dream come true. It's fantastic to be able to put these figures together with my Batman the Animated Series characters and have them interact. So we'll start off by looking at the packaging then for this deluxe set, and it's pretty good, I have to say. This is actually a step up from the Batman the Animated Series packaging, just because it's so much more colourful. It's not an overly elaborate style, but it is vibrant and bright and everything that Superman should be, so it's very attractive to put on to display. Likewise, the side panel art is really cool. It's the same art used on the reverse of the packaging as well, and this looks absolutely fantastic. I think it's really colourful, very displayable, and yeah, it looks really, really nice. The same artwork is replicated yet again on the interior inlay behind the figures, uh, but again, this is very colourful, it's very bright, it's nice to have the figures in there, and it helps the overall packaging. It would have been nice if they had maybe some different images, but this is still very nicely done. Moving on to the figures themselves, and starting with Superman, you can see that he is, of course, super bright, super colourful, exactly as we see in the cartoon. And I think the moulding and sculpting here is pretty much pitch perfect. I think they've done a really fantastic job with the look and design of this. Taking a closer look here at the head sculpt, we can see that they've really very carefully replicated what we see on screen. And I think this is a really sharp likeness, both in terms of the head sculpt, but actually the whole body sculpt looks pretty much exactly what we see, which is absolutely brilliant. The S on his chest is actually engraved, it's moulded into the figure itself, so it's not just painted on. And uh, yeah, I think this is a really nice touch. It somehow gives an extra depth and texture to the figure, which is really very much appreciated. And also the paint apps are really nicely applied on this too, so there's a little bit of smudging here and there, but overall this looks really, really good. A quick note on the cape, it is a soft rubber, which is fantastic, so it's just firm enough to hold itself in place at the top, but at the bottom there, there's a lot of give, it's very malleable, and uh, yeah, it looks really good. As for articulation, well, he has a ball jointed head, meaning of course he can spin his head from side to side, right way around if you want him to, and he can look up and down. Now there's not a huge range of motion here, but there's enough to make it noticeable. He's got ball jointed shoulders, so his arms can kick up and out there, which is uh, pretty solid because he's a big character, he's got those big joints, which works really nice. Uh, he's also got the pin swivel at the elbow as well, so his arm can rotate, and of course it can hinge inwards there to a just slightly less than 90 degrees, but yeah, a, a good distance. He's also got the swivel at the wrist, and of course it hinges as well. Although it doesn't really hinge very far, the, the cuffs of the sleeve there seem to uh, hold it back quite a bit, actually. He then has a swivel at the waist, and uh, yeah, this is pretty solid. It does everything you want it to do. Sadly, there's no ab crunch, and he's got those hinged hips, which look pretty awful when you stretch them out like that, but it's nice to have the articulation, I suppose. They do kick forwards nicely, and they go back a good distance as well, which is cool. It does have a hinge at the knee, bending to mm, just, yeah, about probably 45 degrees, and he's got another hinge at the foot. There is no ankle pivot here. They don't rock from side to side. They literally just hinge forwards and backwards. And then in terms of accessories, well, he's pretty light on him, to be honest. He comes with his turnaround stand, which is nice. It keeps in a consistent style with the Batman, the animated series figures, which is pretty cool. And he also comes with an extra three pairs of hands. And for Superman, I think this is fair enough. There's not many accessories I would think to include with him. Maybe some kryptonite, maybe uh, some effects like laser blasts or something like that from his eyes. But otherwise, you know, in terms of core Superman, yeah, this is all you need. Now then, moving on to Lois Lane, uh, I'm really pleased that they packaged him together because I quite like to have these screen couples in my collection, and uh, yeah, it's nice to have two of them together. Once again, I think the design and sculpt of this is pretty much screen accurate, pretty perfect really. 
I think when we compare it against a uh, still from the show, we can see that this is, yeah, this is a very, very solid uh, likeness that they've gone for. Uh, it's The expression on the face is a little bit disappointing. It seems to be sort of semi-scowling. I suppose that's not an appropriate for Lois Lane, but I think it would have been nice to have more of a neutral or more of a, you know, a smiling face would have been kind of cool. Now, something you've probably noticed already in the video is that I do have to use her turnaround stand to stand her up because, unfortunately, uh, she's one of these characters that does not stand up on her own very well or even at all, to be honest. I really did struggle with this figure. Part of that is due to the very small feet. It looks great in the animation, but it doesn't really work very practically in real life, uh, having these very tiny feet and their uh, bigger upper torsos. Uh, so sadly, uh, yeah, it does mean that gravity works against this figure without a firm footing. The also thing that works against it, of course, is that she also has heels. So this is kind of a, a, you know, a non-starter, really. Articulation is less strong with this figure. It so often is with the female characters because they have these much smaller bodies and tighter joints. Uh, her head can spin from side to side. It does have the same ball jointed neck, but unfortunately the hair at the back there really prevents uh, a lot of movement. As you can see here, it is one long rubber piece, but it's not a very flexible rubber. So sadly it is really hindering. It bashes against the shoulders there and it's not really gonna let the head turn too far. She does have ball jointed shoulders though, and as you can see, these arms really kick out a good distance there and depending on what angle you put it, it looks pretty good for the most part. She's got the same pin swivel at the elbow and her hands, well her arms, can uh, can hinge to roughly 90 degrees, maybe a bit less. Thankfully, the hinge and the swivel on her wrist work perfectly and her hand can go all the way backwards and forwards, which is great. She can swivel at the waist, but it's a little bit limited because of the sculpt of the blazer and the skirt underneath it, so it's a little bit more of a, of a struggle to get that in position. Now, she does also have the hinged hips, but uh, you can't really get much movement out of this. Again, the skirt really, really does hinder this articulation, so that's probably about as far as you're going to be able to do it. The skirt is a rubber, uh, and it's quite soft, but yeah, it's not really working. Now, you try to kick them forwards. Again, this is as far forwards as the legs can go. They can go back a little bit, which isn't too bad, but you're not going to get much more of a range of motion out of these. Uh, however, she can bend her knees a really good distance to counteract that, which is great, but sadly there is no more articulation, nothing in the ankles there at all, so the feet can't hinge and they don't rock from side to side. She's also pretty light in accessories, so again, we just have her turnaround stand and an extra three pairs of hands, so exactly what you get with the Superman. Nothing extra in here, would have been nice to have maybe a microphone, a newspaper, uh, a camera, anything really, but sadly this is this is all we get. In terms of size comparison, I thought it might be useful to put the Batman next to the Superman to see how they compare. Uh, pleasingly, Superman is taller than Batman, as he should be, so I think this is really good. And you can see the contrast between the two styles here and the two figures, and I think they look really, really good together. Uh, this, this is fantastic. I, I, I love how this looks. Sadly, if there were any hopes that this would springboard into a whole range of figures based on Superman the Animated Series, they were quite quickly dashed, as sadly, there were no other figures really produced to support this line. That is with one exception. They did produce this Girls' Night Out 5-pack. And amongst some of the Batman animated series re-releases that we have here with Harley Quinn, Batgirl and Poison Ivy, they did include two brand new characters. That was Supergirl and Livewire. Sadly, that would be the sum total of the figures released by DC Collectibles to support Superman, the animated series, totaling just four. Personally, I think it's a real shame because this is a line I would have gone in on, and I certainly, whilst I might not have picked up all of them, I, there was a few key characters I would have definitely picked up. Doomsday, uh, Lex Luthor, Metallo, etc. The list goes on. And I think it would have been a really fun line to collect and really expand and put on the shelf there. And again, having them interact with the, the Batman animated series characters as well would have been really, really very cool. That being said, I am really pleased that we got these characters. These are definitely the two main stars of the show, uh, and I think we've got really excellent figures here. So whether you're just a fan of Superman the Animated Series, or you loved the Batman DC Collectibles animated series line, then these are great figures for you to add to your collection. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.